Hello everyone. I am Dr. Vishal Sharma, Fulbright Climate Fellow, Na National Renewable Energy Laboratory, United States of America. Uh, basically, I am from Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir, and uh, I am working as Assistant Professor and uh, HOD Department of Electronics, Government MM College, uh, Cluster University of Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, international conference who has given me, given me an opportunity to, to, to interact with all of you and, and present my research work in front of you uh, in, that, in this uh, international uh, e-conference on recent trends in material sciences. Thank you. Thank you very much for this. Today, I'm talking about printing technologies, devices and applications. Uh, as all of you know that printing uh, techniques or printing technology is, is, a, is a very new techniques and uh, it's a very new research and uh, not most, more of the, uh, most of the people are working on this particular field but um, maybe after 10 or 20 years you will find uh, this this printing technologies has, has overcome the whole market so so I think we should start, it's a golden opportunity for, for young researchers, for, for young scientists, research scholars, uh, who, can, who, who wants to learn new techniques and who wants to uh, go into uh, adopt new technologies. So it's a better, it's a golden opportunity for all of you. So uh, if you want any kind of uh, research help or any kind of collaborative or any kind of uh, guidance from my side, my email ID is there, you can contact me anytime and uh, I am more than happy to, happy to, happy to involve with all of you. So thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, <clears throat> now what is the, uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I will discuss uh, some background of printing devices and uh, of course the introduction, uh, what, what is exactly the printing technology is, what is the need for printing and conventional versus printing electronics, what are the conventional techniques uh, by which we, we print, uh, by which we, we design electronic devices, circuit boards and all that and uh, what are the difference between conventional and printing technology, printing electronics. Now, then some sort of uh, advantages of printing technologies and uh, now uh, and after that I will discuss various printing techniques which we can use and we can work on and some sort of applications uh, printing techniques as application almost every field uh, whatever come to your mind but uh, I will discuss some of the potential applications and some concluding remarks at the end of this presentation so First of all, I want to show you these two slides, these photographs to, uh, to you. I'm working in a clean room and uh, in a globe box. And uh, I know uh, all of you are uh, well familiar with this clean room facilities and globe box because uh, all the material scientists and uh, even biomedical scientists uh, are working in these clean rooms and uh, uh, these globe boxes. And uh, all of you know that to, to, to maintain this clean room, what is the clean room basically? Clean room is, is where it's a room or in a globe box, you have to control the, the, the dust particles, uh, number of dust particles, you have to control the pressure, you have to control the humidity, or, or if uh, maybe you have to control the oxygen level. And uh, so uh, to control all these facilities in, in a small clean room or small globe box, you need a lot of monies, I think. You, uh, you need tons of money for that. So it's very, that this research is very, very costly. In, uh, if, if you can say in India, we, we don't have, we can, don't afford, afford this type of research, but still we are working on that. And uh, <clears throat> I say, um, uh, I have some more photographs and then I have an open question for a very scientific community. And uh, first of all, all this clean room, you can see uh, you need some special clothes for that and uh, um, very costly. Everything is uh, very costly and uh, it's very difficult to maintain in India or in any part of the world. And for if, if you work in these clean rooms or in globe boxes, the technology which you are developing, uh, you know, might be very, very costly. So my question is to the whole community. And this is my open question. Can we fabricate low cost electronics? 
in sophisticated clean rooms or in a globe box to fulfill the requirement of the entire world? This is my question, which uh, I am asking to myself again and again, and now I am asking to you, to the audience, can we do that? What do you think? What is your opinion? Can we fabricate? Now, you know, uh, electronics world is increasing day by day. Now you are talking about uh, internet of things and uh, things like that. So uh, the demand of electronics is increasing day by day. And can we fulfill the requirement of the entire world by making all the electronics in a sophisticated clean rooms or in a globe box? What are your opinion? And my answer is no, we cannot. We cannot make all these devices, uh, low cost devices in a clean room. So we have to think, we have to think out of the box. I can say out of the globe box, we have to come out of the clean rooms to make all these electronics possible. So what are the options now it is? And I think the most, uh, you can say the most popular and the uh, option for, 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 uh, for, give, for coming out of the clean rooms and globe boxes is a printed technology, which I'm going to discuss here. So printing technique is the uh, is, is you can say the future of future of science. So we should think of uh, printing all the things. And I think uh, at the end of this uh, presentation, you are able to think out of the globe box and out of the clean room and think in terms of printing everything. So we need, uh, actually this is a very, this technology is a very initial stage. So we need a lot of researchers, a lot of scientists, a lot of academicians in this field so that we can develop this field and we can uh, fulfill the requirement of the entire world. <clears throat> now we'll discuss the, uh, some sort of background of printing. <clears throat> You know, first printing press was invented in 1940 for Johnny's, uh, Johnny's and uh, which uh, when, when he has invented, his invention has revolutionized the whole uh, distribution of knowledge. His invention allowed to print words and sentences in, uh, with punctuation symbols and uh, uh, making it possible to, to produce a large number of copies of a single work in a in a very short span of time so to revolutionize the whole um, you can say uh, um, uh, whole industry whole education industry by 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 printing copies of the books so so uh, the invention is very very important and uh, i think in the same way printed elect electronics intend to revolutionize the production of digital devices by combining the achievements of the uh, printing industry and those of electronics World. So, so I think uh, the future is the future is uh, print printable electronics. What exactly the printing electronics is? <clears throat> now, the term printing electronics refers to the use of printing technologies to produce electronic circuits, components, uh, devices in a variety uh, variety of substrates such as paper. You can print electronic circuits on on a piece of paper. You can print on plastics, you can print it on glass, metals, textiles. You can print on, um, you can say almost every substrate, you can print all this electronic component. So you can see the beauty of printing technology. And uh, for printing, what you require, you require some electro optical function links for that, which can directly deposit on the substrate, creating the various active and passive components like transistor, registers, capacitors, antennas, and so on and so forth. So uh, what we require, we require two things for printable electronics. One, we need a printer for that, appropriate printer. And uh, second, we need, we have to uh, develop some sort of functional inks for that. Then you can create any uh, damn circuit on, 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 on the substrate, on any substrate you can say. Now, what are the advantages of printing things? Now you understand a little bit, I think, uh, what are the printing technologies uh, is. Now, what do you think, what are the advantages? I think first advantage is the lower cost. The cost is very, very less. Why it's less? Because 
you don't have to work under the under the clean rooms no uh, or sophisticated you don't require any sophisticated glow boxes and clean rooms so uh, and you know to maintain all the the stuff in the clean rooms and and the glow box you require tons of money so if you if you are able to work in the ambient conditions in the open atmosphere you you can save a lot of money so the cost of the technology is very very less improved performance of course the performance is improving day by day it required uh, agree with you it required a lot of research but uh, we are increasing the performance of printed technology day by day flexibility is there you nowadays the the demand of flexible electronics is increasing day by day all all the people require flexible if you want to like i'll give you example that if you want flexible if you want to put solar cells on you want you want to develop some uh, solar vehicles you you need to coat solar cells flexible solar cells on your vehicles so you need flexible devices for that so uh, we cannot make flexible devices we can the only technique is to make flexible devices a printed tech easy technique and uh, low cost technique so flexibility is one of the advantage of printing technology lightweight of course it's very thin film it's basically thin film technology so it's the, the films in nano and micro micrometer so so it's very lightweight is there and uh, you require lightweight equipments if you want to have a flexible battery which which you can print on your phone what you require you can require lightweight uh, batteries so the demand of lightweight flexible electronics is increasing day by day because of so many advantages and uh, so many applications transparency is also one of the advantage now transparency uh, you can say uh, like people are working on transparent sheets of solar cells transparent sheets of supercapacitors and if you are if you are able to uh, make some transparent electronics you can coat that electronics on window pans uh, and you can you know uh, it will serve two purposes one uh, it will generate electricity or it will store electricity and at the another uh, hand uh, it will protect you from outer atmosphere so uh, i think transparency is also some one of the advantage you can make transparent lightweight flexible low cost and improved performance electronics with the help of printing technology reliability is there and most about the manufactured in roll to roll process that is very important uh, advantage because in industry you want uh, industries wants uh, you to make it's okay to to fabric a device is low cost device is lightweight flexible transparent reliable no problem you can synthesize all the devices in your lab but when when you talk of industry collaboration when you talk of open market you need to manufacture roll to roll process because roll to roll processing i'll show you what roll to roll processing is because roll to roll processing with the help of this process you can you can uh, um, you can make devices very fast cheap and you can if if you want uh, you know uh, you remember uh, i show in the first slide you you have to fulfill the requirement of the entire world and if you want to fulfill the requirement of the entire world a very small amount of time you need some sort of roll to roll processing only then you can manufacture large amount of device electronic devices and uh, that too are cheap flexible right with transparent so you can fulfill the uh, requirement of the entire world so all the printing techniques which i will going to show you in the next slides will ulti the ultimate goal is to is to is to step towards roll to roll processing so roll to roll processing is also advantage one of the advantages of printing technology and of course in improved environmental condition why because uh, you know uh, in printing technology most of material used in these technologies are of organic type so organic materials are used and uh, they are more environmentally safe as compared to other materials so i can say that some some sort of uh, improved environmental conditions are also one of the advantage of this printing techniques now technological revolution in electronics <clears throat> now you can see uh, how the electronics are developed from uh, you can see from here this is a vacuum diode and triodes in 19 you can say 
up to 1947 when the invention of transistors there we used vacuum diodes and tried that's why you know computer you have heard about that young generation has heard they have, might not have seen the that computer they know that uh, um, the computer uh, and they have heard that the computer is, is the size of a computer is uh, very big maybe four four rooms or five rooms up to so why the size is so big because they use triodes and triads for that uh, and in 47 1947 three scientists invented transistor and uh, they got nobel prize for that but and in 1950 uh, 47 they invented the transistor in 1957 they got nobel prize and after that we the size of the computer reduced to uh, not very small uh, you are seeing nowadays but it's, it's reduced a lot it's from four to five rooms uh, on the uh, reduced to it uh, uh, you can put it on your table so so size of, with the invention of transistors the size is very much reduced so then comes to the uh, the development of uh, integrated circuits it again reduced the size and with the invention of PCBs and all that, then comes the era you know, of nanotechnologies, nano devices are there. But what is the future? And the future is beyond silicon. And the future is beyond uh, all other technologies which we are nowadays making in a, in, a, uh, in a sophisticated clean rooms and in glow boxes. You know, for silicon, silicon is very reactive. When you, when you, uh, when you, when you, we cannot work in open atmosphere with silicon because silicon plus oxygen goes to silicon dioxide. So, and silicon dioxide is not used in, 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 in conductive electronics. So, uh, I think uh, the future is beyond silicon and that is printed electronics. And there are some sort of, you see, some, some sort of application which, which, uh, they're not future, which are uh, nowadays people are working on and uh, they have developed. On many of these applications for so organic circuits with uh, polymeric substrates there are some screen printed biosensors and then thin films batteries flexible batteries there's e-paper and flexible solar cells all, all of these devices all these applications are in, in the in the market you can purchase it uh, it's okay it's, it's it's efficiency or you can say reliability it's not up to the mark but still you can use it and people are working to improve the characteristics of all these applications now this is a very important slide i will show you a difference between printing with photolithography all of you are aware of photolithography for making uh, nano devices and uh, first of all, you see what is photolithography? It start with some sort of substrate and deposited layer, some sort of photoresist coating is there, and then we expose the particular photoresist uh, to make different pattern, desirable patterns, and then striping is stripping is there. Um, the unexposed portion is removed or maybe exposed depending upon which photolithography process you are using. Then sort of etching is used, and then you will get the desired geometry on that substrate. You can see there are six, seven steps and they're very complicated. They are, you have to do in all the, the, these steps in a clean rooms <clears throat> and uh, difficult and naturally uh, they are uh, cost is, there is a huge cost is involved. Now, what is the printing process? If you, if you require a desired geometry on substrate, you take a substrate and print that desired geometry on the substrate. So simple. What do you require? You require substrate, you require printing technique, a printed machine, and you require the printing ink. Three things you require, and you can print a desired uh, pattern on the substrate. So, printing technique is very, very less costly, very easy to maintain than photolithography process. So, you can see, and you can save a lot of money out of that. Now you can see we have developed, uh, we have deposited a lot of uh, inks on, uh, on different type of substrate. You can see here, it's a metal nanoparticle deposited with uh, printing techniques. This is carbon nanotubes. You can see for SEM images, they are graphite and they are CNT silver nanoparticle com combination. And uh, you can see from here, there are a lot of uh, substrates. They are flexible films and they are carbon fibers, composites, they are 3D surfaces, they are metals. So you can you can have any type of substrate. Even you have clothes, you can on fabrics, you can you can print nanomaterials on fabrics. You can material you can print any material 
of which you can make ink on any type of substrate that no matters what the substrate surface is you can print with the printing techniques that is the beauty that is the advantage you can say of printing technology <clears throat> Now, various printing and coating. I will give you the overview of various printing and coating techniques which nowadays people are using. Uh, and uh, you can familiarize with all this technique and you can choose your own technique. And then uh, I already told you the ultimate goal is roll to roll processing. You can start with any technique and you ultimately go to roll to roll processing. So, <clears throat> so, uh, we have a lot of techniques, printing techniques like uh, we have spray printing, that we have blade printing, offset printing, dip printing, inkjet, screen, pad, slot die, aerosol, and and roll to roll printing. I've told you that these all these printing techniques, they're all uh, basically same. The basic principle not very much different. If you can optimize something on any printing thing, the technique, you can transfer that optimization parameters from one technique to other technique. So don't worry about all these techniques. It's all almost the same. I have worked on three to four techniques, uh, these printing techniques. So no need to worry because if you optimize some parameters on a technique, you can uh, transfer that parameter easily with a little bit modification, of course, but you can easily transfer that parameter from one printing technique to other. So, and but what your ultimate goal is to go to this roll to roll. This roll to roll printing because this industry, this is the printing technique which industry want from you. If you can optimize the parameters on roll to roll, you can open your own industry. That I can say. So ultimate goal is roll to roll. But for roll to roll, I will show you what are the advantages and disadvantages of our advantage of working on all these techniques and why not we go directly on roll to roll printing. So I will show you in the, uh, the proceeding slides so uh, there are all the techniques we can choose your own technique we can you can work on one or two techniques no problem in that and you can develop your own printing electronics uh, from there now it's a very good slide this is a develop uh, this is a research paper from nature reviews in our uh, group from our group and uh, i'll show you some you can see all the printing techniques we'll start with blade coating this is a uh, This is a blade coating technique. There's a cursor, yeah. This is a blade coating technique. In this technique, what we'll do, we'll put this, this is a material, we'll put um, ink of the material on the blade, sorry, on the substrate, and this is the blade. We'll, we'll move the blade or the uh, substrate, okay? So and the, the gap between blade and substrate, you have to choose uh, in microns, whatever you want. It all uh, actually what happened, <clears throat> what, what are the different parameters? First, the, the, the parameter is the, uh, the gap between blade and the substrate. You have to choose according to your uh, desire of the film thickness. Uh, and the speed of the maybe blade or substrate, uh, that is also a factor of film thickness and the properties of the film. <clears throat> You have to choose uh, the ink and you have to choose the the solvent which which uh, you are using with the ink so these are four or five parameters that you choose and you can optimize all three four parameters and if you are able to optimize these three four parameter you can transfer this parameter to any printing technique with little bit of course little bit of modification as i already told you so here you can see in, in, in a blade coater this is a substrate this one and then this is a blade we can put material on this uh, substrate and we can move a blade or the substrate to have a smooth and uh, smooth layer of that material on the substrate <clears throat> you can heat the base also you can do so you can heat uh, the base of the coater also that that uh, it all depend upon your material properties so now next is the slot die printing. In the slot die printing, what you do, you put a there's a there's a slot in the blade, and you put ink in this slot. Instead of putting ink directly on the substrate, you put ink you the fill this uh, slot slot with the ink of that material, and then same process. If either you move the blade or or you can move the substrate to have smooth film on that. <clears throat> 
So <clears throat> you can see there's no much difference between these two. Well, if you, if you can, uh, I have worked on these two and uh, of course, you know, parameter from this, you can transfer directly to this with little bit of modification if you want. So easy technique. But the, but the advantages of uh, this or this is that you can see for blade coating, you need a very small amount of material, a little bit material, but for slot die, you have to fill the whole slot. So requirement of material is more. So in the starting, you start with blade coater and then you can go to any, or you can start directly with slot die if you don't have, uh, you have a lot of material, you can purchase it and you can start with slot die, you can be start with spray, you can be in jet. And this is called screen printing. This is uh, used for sheet to sheet uh, printing techniques. So you can see all, but the basic process of all the techniques, you can see from here, the basic process, basic principle of all the techniques is almost same. So you can start with any material, any, any printing technique. Now you can see aerosol jet, jet printing technique. This is why I'm showing you this because this is a very important technique. And <clears throat> in this technique, what do you, uh, what do you have? Same, you have some sort of base, which is sliding in both in, in four di dimensions. And uh, this is a chamber and this is your uh, jet nozzle. Here you put some aerosol stream and then some uh, sort of um, a, a jet of stream from uh, other sides. And uh, <clears throat> you will have substrate, you, could, you can print um, on 3D materials on these substrate with the help of aerosol jet printing. And the speed of this uh, gas is, 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 is equivalent to jet, that's why it's called jet printing. So uh, typically you can, um, the nozzle of the jet uh, is very, very small. So you can have a very fine and accurate uh, dimensions and uh, patterns on the substrate. So it's very uh, helpful in patterning or uh, if you want to make some sort of uh, nano patterning, if you want to make some sort of um, integrated circles patterning. So you can use this uh, aerosols technique that uh, printing technique for that. <clears throat> now this is ultimate roll to roll processing. In roll to roll processing, <coughs> this is ultimate, which, <coughs> sorry. This is a technique, uh, I already told you that if you optimize the parameter on different different te uh, printing techniques, the ultimate code is roll to roll. In roll to roll, I'll take example of uh, solar cells, because in solar cells, we have a lot of like uh, four to five layers, right? So we have, you have to deposit all the layers one by one. So there are different heads. You can see five heads for five layers. You can deposit it. So you can deposit one layer, two layer. You can even change the band, uh, sorry, a gap between blade and the substrate. You can, you can have uh, different pro um, parameters for every different inks. And uh, all you put simultaneously and you run the roll to roll printing and it will print the whole solar cell or whole electronic uh, electronics for you <clears throat> and this is this what the industry required because it's very fast processing you can have a lot of um, solar cells in a few minutes so this technique the industry required and if you want to print um, uh, biosensors you know you know biosensors two or three layers you can make it like that you can put two materials and then you, uh, you can have two layers three layers and so on and so forth so this roll to roll printing is very important technique for that. Now this is a uh, blade coater techniques in our lab in, on which I've, uh, I used to work. So this is the, <clears throat> with this technique, uh, this is a inkjet printer in our lab. People are working on making solar cells and they super capacitors and uh, super batteries, flexible batteries and, and so on. They have a very quick efficiency, it's like uh, twenty percent efficiency with the help of these uh, inkjet printers. There are some of the flexible electronics developed by me in my uh, in my lab. <clears throat> There's the paper from our group, roll to roll printing of perhaps solar cells. 
So they have uh, uh, developed roll-to-roll uh, -roll printing with efficiency of 15%. This is very good efficiency with roll-to-roll -roll printing technique. You can see here, this is a roll of roll to roll uh, coating setup. And this is the uh, perovskite film, thin film, solar cells, which, uh, which was fabricated with the help of roll to roll coating setup. And you can see from here, 20, 23 approximately, 23 centimeter wide and uh, length, you can imagine it's a roll to roll. So it's a very big solar cell and you can use it. And this flexible lightweight solar cell, which you can use anywhere to coat on your, your vehicles and uh, on your walls. You can make curtains out of that and so on. So <clears throat> this is what the rotor roll processing can do. And you can see from here, we have optimized the parameter for slot die and the efficiency is 18%. Solar cell, I'm talking of solar cell. And when you uh, do, uh, when you transfer that parameters to roll to roll, this is a roll to roll setup in our lab, the efficiency is 15%. You can see, see that. You can directly transfer all these parameters to here. And if you can optimize a little bit of optimization, you can increase the efficiency very easily. So, <clears throat> and uh, I'll tell you one more thing. Why we are directly, we, we won't directly go to a roll to roll because it requires a lot of money for optimization. If you want to optimize on roll to roll directly, it requires a lot of money because it's a, they are, you, you can see so, uh, width is 22 centimeters and length is you can imagine how long it is so it is very difficult and it requires kilograms of materials very costly so don't go directly on roll to roll start with some other techniques and then you can transfer parameters from roll to roll to sorry from uh, any other technique to roll to roll <coughs> technique now what are the challenges in my view there are only two challenges for printing electronics first you have to develop best conductive inks for printed electronics. This is the challenge and um, I think all the material scientists are working on that. They are developing some sort of material. So if you can develop uh, conductive inks for printed electronics, you can do wonders. And second is, you see, basically new technology and uh, you need a lot of hit and trial methods to, to get some optimization. It's not easy, you get some uh, optimization from the research paper and you will do that and uh, it will work for you, it may not work for you. So you have to develop your own techniques, you have to develop your own parameters and you have to develop your own. Uh, it's not easy that I will show you a parameter, you do work on that and yes, it's, it's, if I will tell you a parameter, you can start with and you will get something, but you have to again work on that. So these two are the challenges. They are not big challenges, you can overcome it easily. So I think you should work on that, you start your research on that. And now I'll discuss some sort of applications. I'll show this picture. This is a um, this is from MIT, uh, and MIT researchers have fabricated a new technique that is called stamping printing. They 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 have developed a stamp. Uh, you know, you have a if you are a gazette officer, you have a stamp for it. You and same stamp is worked here. So they make the stamp and uh, with the help of carbon nanotubes, and they are able to print electronics inks onto rigid and flexible substrates. And this unique stamping technique capable of printing transistors very small enough to control individual pixels in high resolution displays and touch screens. And you can see the size of the printing technology, how much um, lower we can go with this. So we can go, we can do wonders with that. And I'm telling you, it's still on the initial stage. You can, you can, you can do in wonders here. And there are some some healthcare monitoring for empowerment, uh, empowering the patients. There's some uh, small badges which uh, on your which can imprint on your skin, and uh, they will monitor your health. Now you nowadays you are wearing you know your watches for that Apple watches, or some other company also. But you have small uh, smart badges for that, and you they will monitor your health. Even you have a electronic skin for that. You can see your uh, sensors, and they are on your body, and uh, your health is monitored in every second. And there are electronic tattoos are there. You know, a lot of people have a craze of tattoos, so you can you can bring tattoos on your skin, and they will monitor your health, your heartbeat, your, your blood pressure, and all that. 
you have some angioplasties there and some electronic heart is there. So a lot of applications in biomedical, bioinstrumentations and a lot of application in, in, in almost every field, you can say. And this is a very beautiful picture. This is newborn babies and uh, uh, the scientist from New Western, uh, Western University has uh, developed some sort of flexible and, and soft sensors for newborn babies, which, which they will implant in their uh, print on their, uh, on their skin. And, uh, they will, and the, the sensor will monitor their health, health of the new newborn babies in the ICUs. So it's a very important, it's a very, I think, um, innovative application of tech, uh, this technology, printing technology. Now, MIT engineers have created sensors that can be printed onto plant leaves and reveal when the plant or experience a water shortage. Now they have uh, printed some sort of sensors on that and they will tell you uh, what, when there's a need for watering the plants. And it's very important when, when in the, in the, especially when climate change and all the things, water shortages and, uh, and environmental increase in environmental temperatures. Is there. So, so uh, these are the, some potential applications. You can think of uh, more applications out of that. And this is a very beautiful application. The scientist has uh, uh, created uh, analog and digital electronic circuits inside living flowers and uh, trees and plants using some semiconducting polymers. And uh, what are they thinking about? Actually what happened in electronics, the electronics exchange, ele the exchange of electrons is, is there. But in polymers, organic solar cells, as you often, uh, as all of you knows that in organic materials, the exchange of ions is there instead of electrons. So what happened? When you, when you, uh, with this printing um, electronic circles on, on uh, in, uh, inside the living plants, there is a, a range of possibilities which opens up, open up in the in this universe. Like you, uh, they are planning to utilize energy for photosynthesis in a fuel cell, are reading the and regulating the growth and other inner functionings of the plant. So they are thinking out of the box and. Uh, some, some some applications in different different fields. Though, so uh, some solar powered car charging station if, uh, that is possible with the help of this flexible and lightweight solar cells. Very important. Uh, tiny solar panels under your skin are almost ready to power the next generation of medical devices. So you can see the applications of these printing technologies. Very interesting. This is temperature sensitive coffee cup with printed electronics on it. It will monitor the taste of your coffee, whether the coffee is up to the mark or not, it, what are the sugar level of the coffee, what about the temperature of the coffee, and it will monitor all these things. Uh, it's an interesting application people are thinking about. So yes, it's one of the application. Now flexible and folded array of solar cells that have been printed on a sheet of paper. No, now scientists at MIT, they are, they are printing solar cells on a piece of paper. They are printing supercapacitors on a super piece of paper. No need of any substrate. You can take an ordinary paper and print solar cells on it. And if you can see, you can go to the market and purchase 10 solar cells from the market and put it on your walls. So easy. So this is a future. This is not a future. Uh, you can say it's uh, after 40 years. It's, it's maybe after five to six years. Uh, these are some sort of super capacitors uh, by inkjet printing that people are making them. Now you can you can uh, save your you can uh, you can store energy on these super capacitors, and uh, might be you might be one day you you have a phone and uh, your this super printed super capacitor is on printed on your phone on the back of your phone for your battery by replacing your battery. So you might have thought of this and you can think of this you can think more than this uh, application these applications now another application is batteries they are all flexible batteries people are working on flexible batteries printable batteries and uh, same like if you can uh, storing for storing when take super capacitor or batteries if all the printable you can print the battery on the back of the screen and uh, you can use your phone and you can charge your battery anytime so 
and it's not your phone is not heavy and you can even you can print your battery on your laptop and see how light your laptop is after you remove your battery or print your battery or print your super capacitor instead of your battery so there are a lot of applications now conclusions Printed electronics helps in making everyday objects smart. For antennas, smart biosensors, displays, printing batteries, printable electronics are being integrated into paper, plastic, fabric, metals, 3D printing objects in almost every field it has application, almost every substrate you can print. So that is the beauty of printing technology. It is one of the fastest known technology today and has influenced several industries including healthcare, aerospace, media and so on and so forth. The interest in printing electronics lies primarily on the prospect of the printing is a low cost technique. I already told you and uh, ultimately capable of bringing down the manufacturing products that conventional silicon manufacturing cannot reach. So uh, you cannot reach with conventional manufacturing up to that level. So this new technology can bring down so many things. So it's better technology for the future. The market for printed electronics growing because the internet of things is expanding and requiring low cost lightweight technology and that can sense store information and transmit data. So I already told you that you require the internet of things is you know, uh, developing day and day, uh, day and night. So you need a lot of electronics for that. And uh, if you are able to make all the electronics with the help of printing, you can do wonders. You can only reach each and every people in the universe with the help of printing te techniques. And according to an estimate, this is a very, very, a very important message for young students, young researchers and scientists. The market for printed and flexible electronics is set to reach over 7 trillion by 2025. So a lot of scope for everybody in this field lot of such positions, lot of, uh, I think, jobs in the market, lot of industry. You can start your own industry in this field. So a lot of scope is there. Sky is the limit for you. You can go through it. This is a new technology and you can do wonders in that. Very simple, very easy to fabricate, very low cost. And thank you so much for your patience. And if you require any type of uh, um, if you have any question, want to contact me for any type of research, help in any type of research, you can contact me on my email ID. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you much, very much for uh, organizing this conference and giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much.